VR, the way we think about VR at USA Today is it's a new medium. And as a new medium, we, we have to examine the basics of the sort of fundamentals of storytelling in this new medium. And I think all of us content creators, journalists, um, whatever you are, Aaron, um, are currently at the, a very sort of nascent stage of understanding not just what are the tools of storytelling in a new medium, uh, but what are the tools, how do we use them, and what are the new kinds of stories that we can tell. So what, what you're doing, uh, which is completely reasonable, and what all of us are doing, is we're taking our current thinking of how we think about storytelling in print, or radio, or short form video on, on the web, or documentary filmmaking, and we're applying that lens to storytelling in VR, because that's all we know. But that is not, uh, that's, that's, that's not what's going to determine great storytelling in the future. Uh, I think we, through trial and error, through, through learning by doing, through fast failure, we're gonna figure out how do we tell compelling stories in this new medium? And what are the tools? And, and questions like, um, uh, like where do you place the camera, I think are, are, are gonna fade away as, as these new tools and capabilities are revealed. Suddenly you're in a world where it seems like you have much less control over your own storytelling. So how do you bring those principles of storytelling into a VR experience? What carries over from what we've done before and what are we just gonna have to throw out from our old thinking? I, I don't think the principles of storytelling change at all in, in VR. I think the tools change mm -hmm. and I think the the uh, the control that traditionally traditionally rested with the the director or, or the storyteller, um, some of that is being ceded to the audience. And uh, you talk about uh, selectivity or interactivity or being able to look wherever you want to look. That there's a choice there for the audience to follow the narrative that you, the storyteller, are providing, or to experience it in a different way. And that can be unnerving for a lot of people or freeing for, for new VR storytellers. Um, that's a terrible phrase, by the way. Um, VR but, storytellers? <coughs> we just don't like, don't like that phrase. <laughs> but, but, but I think, I, 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 don't think, I don't think the fundamentals of storytelling change. Uh, I think it's just what, what had been uh, sort of control or choices made by the storyteller are now shared with the audience, and, and that's a shift. There's an opportunity with VR that I think is really exciting with journalism where it's like uh, you know, cinema verite, where you can't, you can't hide a wire or a, a camera crew, or I mean, you know, people can duck behind a rock or something, but there's an opportunity in that to show something as it really is. And so, um, you know, I, sometimes traditional journalists will say, oh, you know, isn't this, can't you fake things or do them? And, you know, it's like so crazy to me that for so long we've had just a frame like this that anything could be happening here. You could be on a sound stage, uh, you know, so um, we, I'm really excited about that and where that goes. And just to add one more point, we talked about it backstage, but 2015 for all of us up here and anybody who was in anywhere in the VR space was like a brutal year of really, I mean, we had, there were five of us who slept at our office for eight months because we were working around the clock on these things. It was just anybody who was in the VR, like I have gray hair, we were talking about backstage. It's just, it was a hard, wonderful, incredible year, but it was hard. I have scars. Yeah. yeah. I have scars. Yes. Uh, but that's what it took, and, and I think that um, 2016, we're going to work twice as hard, you know.